one thing about women is we are multitasking. Every woman should realize she can work at home and she can work out. She can work. Yes. She, it's, it, she, they are multitaskers. <laughs> we manage the home. It's not that I did not manage my kids or I did not manage my house and I was always working. No, I was uh, multitasking as well. And um, I think so every woman who wants to, because this, as you said, you know, we have this one chance, one chance to do what we like, to uh, give little path to our passion. Welcome to Speak Up, Light Up, your podcast and show to listen to prominent founders and CEOs who are speaking up the truth, the truth about their path to success, the reality and journey behind the scenes. And we are opening up the conversations about the important topics that shape the reality we are living in today. And for your reality, we are lighting up the tangible solutions and proven strategies, as well as applicable tools to create a greater life for you, for society, for humanity in general. Join our movement as our mission to encourage and inspire more listeners and viewers to speak up. Share your voice. Your voice matters. Your voice must be heard. I'm your host, Valerie Presetti. Today we have very important topics, I think, when it comes to building successful business, but in general have success in life or living the life fully, the life full of confidence. And our guest today is tuning in all the way from Dubai. She's an award-winning, multiple award-winning entrepreneur. She's the mentor of the year and founder of uh, Label RM. It's an outstanding brand of unique fashion jewelry that is designed in-house and handcrafted, combining complex shapes and undulting pattern with precious and semi-precious stones. I believe when you wear this uh, piece of jewelry, you definitely feel like a queen. So welcome, Renu Manjunat. I hope I was it correct. Hi, Renu. Hello. Uh, thank you so much, Valerie, for inviting me for this prestigious um, talk. I'm looking forward to, um, to tell about my uh, journey in this jewelry industry. Yeah, we are so looking forward and ex excited because it's so incredible to see women role models who are rocking different industries in the world. And, you know, there is gorgeous um, jewelry with like, like luxurious, sparkling and shining. But what about your path in this industry? What is the other side of the sparkle that people normally don't see? Uh, well, my path starts from the childhood. I come from, um, uh, my forefathers were jewelers before, uh, long before, and um, later on, um, uh, when my grandma used to tell me stories about how she used to adorn a lot of jewelry pieces, I used mm, to be nice. very jealous. I used to fight with her. Why didn't you keep these pieces for me? <laughs> so I feel uh, she has instilled this um, um, jewelry world to me. I come from a country that has culture of jewelry, you know, India. India has Vera, it's, it's a jewelry world, right from the north to the south. You'll find different varieties of jewelry. Our weddings do not happen without leveling up ourselves with loads of uh, pieces. So uh, uh, born in Bombay and um, um, looking at the culture all the time, looking at what beautiful pieces we um, we have there, it always had me um, inspired to walk this path of um, this artistic world of, and um, Valerie, we also think that jewelry is much a feminine um, thing. We yeah. all love to dress up, we love to adorn pieces. So um, yeah, that was my journey to come into jewelry. I got married and when I came to Dubai, of course, Dubai was also a world, or it is a world of glittering pieces. It's a world of real jewelry. Yeah. 
but there was a market where um, um, fashion jewelry was still not um, um, liked more. So um, I took up this challenge. I wanted to create pieces that looked very exclusive, very um, feminine, as well as a stylish statement for uh, women. Plus, they are affordable, not like real that you can't wear it daily. Wow. This sounds like the whole inspiration and this love to jewelry world, let's say, is coming from your family, from the roots. This is such a beautiful mission because I think it also shapes the values of the business you're building. And uh, I would say I saw some, uh, maybe we can show people, like put on the screen some pieces. I love it. <laughs> yes. And who knows, maybe somebody wants to get them. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so definitely. this episode is dedicated to self-confidence and we're speaking up about different issues that people have with regards to this uh, in order to you know find the light in the dark tunnel when i see the pictures of these gorgeous models and beautiful stunning jewelry pieces you can feel their self-confidence their power their strength even from the pictures uh, the energy is so powerful what about the real world? Uh, have you ever had any kind of issues with the self-confidence? And in case you did, what did help you to build yourself up, for example, as an entrepreneur? Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, maybe you have some secret ingredients. And I'm talking, would, would love to talk not just about the you know, external self-confidence, because um, I know sometimes we can put a red lipstick or even jewelry or wear a tailored costume that will like we feel confident but I would love to talk about this inner feeling of being confident have this internal self-belief what can be the core of it yeah when I started there was a, it's a very different journey altogether um so we were, um, I have come from a generation where, um, you know, real jewelry was important. Now the generation is every woman wants to work. They don't want to sit at home. So, and every woman wants to look stylish. The younger generation, the generation, the next coming up just does not want to wear what traditional jewelry we had. So for me, the challenges were, um, how would I instill, instill the tradition of our culture but liked by the um, younger generation. And um, um, like we all are working women, we, are, we do not wear uh, heavy jewelry all the time. So how do I bring in um, this change? Of course, there was challenges. Like when I started, I developed a new jewelry with shells, the real shells. And I was very uh, insecure whether this jewelry, this pieces, uh, these handmade, handcrafted pieces would work in Dubai market. Um, mm. Definitely, you know, you're uh, insecure about um, the client's requirement at that time. But uh, touch wood, I got very good response. Each piece became a statement piece. And there I got my confidence. Yes, we could change this to uh, a trend setting um, collection. Mm. But uh, like in general, like for example, one side is, is uh, having this self-confidence as entrepreneur. Another side is this kind of inner confidence, no matter what you do in life, because sometimes people want to be entrepreneur. Sometimes they just want to go explore the world or even just stay home or do whatever, no matter what you are doing. Uh, because also for women, it's important because we are, have, for example, kids, we are, show, we are role models for the next generations. And it's also important to give this kind of feeling and vibe of what does it mean to be self-confident? Confident. And one thing is when, okay, we can, for example, like put red lipstick or we can wear gorgeous and stunning pieces of jewelry. And we get definitely this outside, let's say, uh, self-confidence but when it comes to the inner feeling how do you really truly feel about yourself how confident you are and believe in your success it's a bit different so what kind of 
ingredients, let's say, uh, were important for you to build up this self-confidence. And nowadays you're very well established in Dubai market and your, uh, let's say, home market, but also globally. Yes, um, I always go with my instinct feelings. Um, uh, when it comes to self-confidence, you have to just believe in yourself. Um, I know the path is not easy. We are um, um, facing such a challenging uh, times. The markets are changing. For me, like every day, the mod markets are changing. Modern, um, the, uh, the markets require new things, new products, affordable goods. So um, at that time, uh, I go with what I believe. I believe, no, at this product, I will uh, definitely work it out in the market. And I go with that um, uh, feeling uh, whenever I'm, uh, you know, um, inside uh, exhibitions or when I am with the clients. My most clients are also peers. Um, uh, for the, they come for their wedding requirement, they, for their customization, and every bride has um, her own dream. So that time, mm. uh, they trust us that I would deliver her what she wants for um, um, for her wedding day. So that with that is where you know um, I feel I go with my um, feeling. You know I can't do it, and this is going to be best. So that's how I develop uh, my confidence. So I believe it's just um, when you really find your passion and you develop particular skills, and you definitely know what you are good at and what you what kind of value you can bring. Uh, it's just this confidence comes to the very next level. So yeah. just just do it, just try it, just uh, yeah. you don't you uh, question you. yourself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I think we're talking about self-confidence today from different kind of uh, facets, let's say. And as long as you were also talking about culture, from the cultural and traditional side, um, sometimes it's, you know, it's very important among what kind of, people were growing up, the mindset that surrounds us, let's say. And I believe we're both coming from the culture where the role of woman is a little bit undervalued, let's say. And when, for example, getting married is the biggest achievement or giving birth to kids is the mission of the life, let's say. Maybe I am a bit exaggerating, but just a bit, because this nowadays in some parts of the world exactly how it is and uh, i think we are on a mission to remind women that yes we're here we're speaking up it takes courage it takes uh, confidence but we can do it and uh, what was your path looking like despite all the stereotypes that women actually should just sit home and you know nowadays we're i think lucky and privileged because we have different women empowerment platforms we have communities we have different events that support women entrepreneurship but in the past working women or women in business is no way and uh, how was it for you to succeed despite of stereotypes despite of this let's say social narrow-mindedness Yes, I also come from a country where um, uh, women are not given that importance or it is changing. I would say my country is also changing. Um, our generations back, women were just uh, in the household and still mm -hmm. in the rural areas of India, uh, women do just the household jobs, household uh, yeah. chores, but they are not into, um, uh, um, you know, um, coming out to the world. Yes, mm. it's changing. Social media is everywhere. People are real, the women are realizing that they have um, equal, um, um, uh, what we can say is um, uh, talent like men. Um, mm. But yes, for, for me, I come from uh, a joint family system. Um, that was my uh, growth. I have, uh, I had all uncles, aunt and everybody at home. So it was a big family for us. Um, but my parents were very broad-minded. They never had a difference between um, 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 the boy or the girl in the house. 
but mm-hmm. this might be because i was from a city i was from a pro- very good city but uh, from uh, rural areas in india still we um, think that women are better at home so um, for me the journey has been blessed because uh, my parents gave me the right education and then my um, uh, in-laws my pay my husband they were all very supportive to uh, whatever i wanted to do in life so uh, i would say yes um, um, my journey was not as difficult as we other women would um, find it but what you recommend to women or like even not only women i think so like men as well sometimes face this kind of expectations from family or close people or in general like socially traditionally you are supposed to be just like this way you cannot go like right you cannot go left just like that so what kind of encouragement would you give to them because i think life is given just once and our main goal is just to live it fully experience it fully because we'll never go back in this exact time i think even if you believe in like reincarnation and all these things and one day maybe you will come back here in this planet it will be completely different times completely different environment you will be a completely different person so this experience is unique so uh you know um valerie one thing about women is we are multitasking every woman should realize she can work at home and she can work out she can work yes. she, it's it, she, they are multitaskers <laughs> we manage the home it's not that i did not manage my kids or i did not manage my house and i was always working no i was uh, multitasking as well and um, i think so every woman who wants to because this as you said you know we have this one chance one chance to do what we like to uh, give little path to our passion so um, yes we can we can come out we can work we can handle the home as well and we can um, give some time to our uh, passion too mm-hmm. well that's true right multitasking and if you have some issues with uh, let's say productivity or scheduling the day i think there are so many resources nowadays that you can learn different tools and just choose for yourself what serves you the best and yeah, the only yeah. important yeah thing is just make a choice a choice that you want to become this kind of person who can have and family and career if you want or just like explore different sides of yourself yeah so yeah. we have so many women groups as well you know for the support so it's not mm-hmm. that you won't get a support from the society we like we also are part of so many groups that help us also to grow to help us enter new markets so it it won't be very difficult once you make up your mind and yes i'm going to manage this as well and i would i would love to give time to my passion mm mm-hmm. yeah so let's talk about uh, a different source of lack of self confidence or the insecurities sometimes we have i think one of such sources as well is fear or fears and uh i understand like we are going like we were born with just like for example fear of the noise the fear to fall down the rest we acquire just like through the lifetime mm-hmm. so what can be your i don't know advice maybe personal example how did you act in spite of act and succeeded despite of the fears because I think why not the important steps to smash the sphere so let's say and I talk about this in um, the book actually if you want to get some resources and tools I can put the link uh, below in the description box but it's facing like the first stage is facing the spheres but now okay I'm aware I have this type of spheres and that type of spheres what would be the next step maybe you can give some personal example because I really when you go even like look your experience moving to a new country tapping into this global industry I think it's of of course like courage confidence are important but still we do have the spheres deep inside so how you were dealing with this or you are still dealing 
Valerie, we all are dealing with fears, either small or big. There is all; it is always there with us. Like if I talk talk about my work, uh, let's talk about the COVID times. Now, who had predicted COVID would come in? We were all prepared with new. Sorry, uh, every season we need to prepare new jewelry, and um, and then uh, the COVID came in. Um, we were not prepared for it. We were. Um, we definitely have insecurity when your products are already ready, and you have no market. And what do you do of that? And by the time the markets opened, it was always a festive season of India. So you, your, uh, um, where do you put your uh, Western products like your uh, summer products? So all this um, insecurity is and. Uh, this also push, pulls down your self-confidence. Okay, now what is next for us to do? So uh, even in personal life, we have so much of uh, We have kids. We are working. And we came out to a new country. I'm working in a new environment. I did not know what um, Arabic jewelry is all about. So mm -hmm. we are, are dealing with it. And I feel the more you handle it confidently, the more bold, confident you are then. Mm -hmm. yeah that's true so let us just just do it <laughs> just do it you know what i did i had um prepared summer jewelry that was my spring collection 2020 and uh by the time the markets opened was the festive season and we do in india wear festive it's like heavy jewelry what do mm -hmm. i do so what yeah. I did was i instead of creating new jewelry i broke this and made it into fusion pieces with the uh, combining traditional with modern to give a new look mm -hmm. to the um, site uh, because we all were definitely tired of um, lockdown as well. So we wanted to have something new. Yeah. So basically also creativity. And uh, I don't think you have to be afraid of such situations, let's say SOS situations. Yeah. It's just yeah. for us opportunities to be more creative to come yeah. up with new ideas and mm -hmm. i think the beauty especially like in in your industry where you see the end product is that mm -hmm. you can actually see and touch the end result and to see yeah. how your vision comes true especially you know when you have the surround shows or some beautiful marketing campaigns or you see how your clients are shining this is the beauty of and you can find it in every industry, in every work. Yeah. I think like one of the um, questions. I'd like to show you a piece before that. Just wanted to show sure. you. Wow. This is so stunning. I've created with the uh, real pearls. This is gorgeous. Thank you. A lucky <laughs> clients of yours <laughs> who will be having this piece so and, and basically my question was about uh, you know i think a lot of women will be interested to know how you're doing this uh, because when i see the jewelry like uh, is a separate piece like you showed now of for example i look by the by the way you can see on the screen instagram um account so that you can go and check all the stunning collections it looks gorgeous but it also looks like it's for special occasions mm -hmm. and for example it's hardly to imagine that here in like western world a woman will like take wear this piece of jewelry and go for business meeting or do some casual casual things but at the same time when i look at your like when you're on the stage or we're just working and we for example have this meeting today this conversation you are able to integrate this in your casual look and it looks natural and the question is like how are you doing this because this kind of in a way gives um feeling of fem femininity and so it's basically about how to have this level of confidence that you bring this energy of femininity even in the such tough and competitive world as a business world so when I say about me, I, I, you know, I feel what I love to wear is what I will make it for others as well. 
and mm -hmm. um, like if i'm wearing a white top and i want to go with a chunky piece it's it's it gives me the confidence that yes this is how i am going to present myself today mm -hmm. and um, and i i i want looking forward to uh, for your audience to tell me okay, how do how does it look on me so uh, talking <laughs> yeah. about the confidence that's yeah that, that's the confidence that comes in when people tell me oh this looks great and how you're carrying it on your um, normal dress um, definitely when i'm going for your meetings and all we do not wear heavy pieces but since i'm into customization i'm making just special pieces for uh, office wears and uh, for um, clients who do not wear heavy jewelry so mm -hmm. yes there is I think it's also, you know, the, like chakras, <laughs> if you are about yeah. to speak or present mm. something and you put here mm. something on your like neck part, something massive, it's, yeah, also prepares that, your... That to goes to my culture that each part of our jewelry is connected to our uh, chakra. So, you know, that is, again, why do we wear ring? Why do we wear earring? Because that triggers um, the aura or the vibes inside us. That's why we, we love wearing jewelry. Because every piece or every um, uh, jewelry that we adorn definitely affects our aura, our chakras. So um, that is goes back to my culture. Yeah, I, I mean, I love this part because sometimes people are not aware what kind of uh, like external factors or even sometimes we feel like we, we really feel different we can wear the same things but we feel different and we yeah. just like don't realize what is going on but like small things and changes as you said if we put ring on this particular finger the color yeah. the stone everything affects this exactly. invisible energies is they invisible but doesn't mean that they don't exist so mm -hmm. i also invite our listeners our viewers to really dive in into the you know i would say science in a way but also some energetical world <laughs> behind this uh, because it's very fascinating and also exciting to learn more and see how it works for you like check just sometimes try no, experiment definitely when we work with pearls pearls have a different aura it helps you you know shine so there is a lot of meanings to the stones we use of course um there are people who do some people who don't believe in it but there are a lot of people who believe in all these gemstones and um uh, special um, um why emeralds are worn why sapphires are important for us and um, how we can uh, keep ourselves strong or um, like protected. So there is, there are, mm -hmm. these are the stones and these, that is why jewelry is in. And um, uh, in our tradition, it's very important for us to be having jewelry on our body all the time. Yeah. So basically, did it just appear as a result of uh, this was kind of mission behind this to put jewelry in particular parts of the body or yeah. was it just yeah. like a decorative um, element how did it like begin you, in your culture no no uh, it started with this there is a science behind it that jewelry does affect your um, um, uh, thinking your um, style and uh, your vibes so um, um, our culture if you go back everybody wore um, uh, jewelry according to their um, um, sun signs or according to their birth time because we um, in Indian culture our birth time is very important so uh, according to that is our uh, signs of what we belong to and what uh, stones would help us to grow in life wow this is interesting so yeah. I really invite like, now all our listeners and viewers to check the collection yeah. we will leave the link uh, you know, we have clients who, you know, especially bring in their beads. Uh, they have they have uh, been advised to wear pearls. They are advised to wear rubies. So we design it um, in such a way so that it looks modern, but it does not. Um, it does. It you know it does not show that okay you're wearing something uh, religious, but it's 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 a modern. So she can wear it every day and nobody is going to like you know. Mm. Um, like so, so we, we work with a lot of clients like that as well hmm. 
So basically, like summarizing everything, and then we actually ask all our guests. I believe that we are all creators, and you are also, mm. as I told, creating gorgeous and amazing pieces of jewelry that you can see as an end product. See how people shine, how they happy and confident to, uh, wearing them, and uh, we're creating our own our own universe as well, and yeah. that impacts ourselves, but also other people with whom we are integrating, collaborating, communicating. So as a renew creator, what would be your message to people who are listening and watching us today? What will be your inspiration lighting up? Uh, I always feel trust yourself, believe in yourself, because unless you don't believe yourself, the world is going to not uh, change for you. The moment you are confident, you believe in yourself, uh, you will always find your path um, to success, be it in your home ground, be it in your business ground. Trust yourself. That's your first thing that we have to do. And secondly, um, what I feel is that life is beautiful. So you come out, love life, enjoy the moments and you definitely are going to be more happier and successful thank you very much renu for sharing sharing your wisdom i believe our listeners our viewers uh, learned something from this episode as well as diving deeper in this jewelry stones colors our life is truly precious and uh, i just really want to summarize and <laughs> share one thing um as i mentioned we live just once and just look at every single moment that you are living as this precious like you know precious stones but this is like your precious moment that you can appreciate an opportunity to share your presence no matter if you are doing Thing and you're changing the whole planet and you're changing the world or you're just sitting here be present and have com conversations with amazing people or you are present just with yourself during meditation or just like thinking processes your vision enjoy this opportunity and i think gratitude yeah. this is one of the sources that mm -hmm. also expands to self-love yeah. to self-confidence and self-belief so thank you very much thank for, for being here to do. and I want to thank all our listeners, all our supporters, all our followers. If you would love to learn more and have meetings with incredible founders, CEOs, entrepreneurs from all over the world, like, share, follow our channel of our podcast. And you know what? It's time to speak up, light up. <laughs>